Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great and check out what I got today. A whole other 30 kilograms of 50 millimeter thick aluminium plates. That means today is finally the day I'm going to finalize the mechanical build of my super strong DIY CNC. Stick around. As you can see, I clamped the body into place for now, so I can mark the relative position of the parts to each other. I also went ahead and marked and center punched all the hole locations, since I figured after two parts you're probably tired of seeing me do that. My next job now is to pretty much take everything apart I've built so far in preparation of more hole drilling and tapping. I know, pretty exciting stuff. In case there is someone watching who wants to reproduce this, I will quickly go over what's happening. At first I use a small drill to pre-drill all the holes. This will prevent wandering of the bigger drills and increase my chance of precision. Since those small drills break easily, it is very important to use lubrication at this step. Next I use a 10mm woodworking drill to drill a countersink for the screw heads. The flat bottom will ensure that I can fine adjust the screw later without it self-centering on the hole. The screws themselves are mostly M5 screws. That means drilling 7mm holes on the side that is going to clamp down and 4mm holes where I need to tap threads later. Since my drill press is literally the cheapest one available, and so are my drills, all the holes have a noticeable burr, which I need to remove with a chamfer bit. Now usually I prefer manual tapping, but facing this amount of holes I bought a machining tap. They are supposed to be used with special machines, but you can get away with using just normal drill. In this case I set the clutch to a conservative setting and used alcohol as lubricant, which made it possible to get through all the holes in about half an hour. To transfer the thread location to the other part, I had to temporarily reassemble the frame and use a drill to mark the spots. Then it was back to drilling and tapping. Did I mention this project involves a lot of drilling and tapping? To make the x-axis stronger, I'm gonna add gussets. There's one at the bottom and one at the top on either side. But right now they are still in one piece, so I need to make a cut diagonally to separate them. And since aluminium is pretty easy to work with using woodworking tools, I'm going to use my band saw to make that cut. And finally, I can assemble the machine hopefully for the last time. It still needs to be calibrated to run smoothly, but for once the dial indicator hasn't arrived yet, and I also don't know how to do that properly. So if you have any tips, please let me know in the comments below. You're seeing me using my drill to screw in the parts, but I don't use it to tighten the screws. I'm doing that manually off camera to get a better feel. This machine is getting really heavy now, making it difficult to maneuver around alone. To keep the ball screws in place, you need to attach a spring clip to one side using a special pair of pliers. A nut then fits on the threaded part of the other side to take up any slack in the assembly. And finally, I can attach the driving gear. 
This is going to connect the ball screw to the motor using a pulley. And here it stands in all its glory. Just in case you were wondering, this entire machine so far needed 165 through holes and 142 tapped holes, including pre-drilling, drilling to final size, countersinking, chamfering and tapping. This amounts to a grand total of 1464 drilling operations. I really, really don't want to do any drilling for a while. Now before I end this video, there are still a few things I want to address. For once, the top of the bearing blocks and the top of the ball screw cage are not perfectly aligned. I had to use a few pieces of paper as spacers so it wouldn't bind, and I probably will replace them with proper shim stock in the future. The other thing some may have noticed is that the Z-axis motor mount is only a 5mm plate and not even the full width of the axis. But there is a very specific reason for that. And that is, I forgot about it and didn't buy the parts. So yeah, another problem for future me. Last, I want to mention this extra set of holes in the machine bed. I put those in since I haven't decided yet what I rather want. 30cm are really sturdy bed, or 40cm but with only 15cm in the middle fully supported. I guess I will see how much metal I actually machine and if I can get by with only using the middle part. Depending on that, I will either leave it as it is or change the bearing blocks to the other position. I want to thank you for watching and I hope you found this interesting. If you enjoyed it, it would be great if you left a comment, like or even subscribe to my channel. In the next episode, I will do the wiring, install the electronics and maybe even make the first chips. Until then, have a great day!